Well, hello, my friends. El Furtado here, the Rebel Turner. Uh, today is a uh, kind of an odd subject, uh, in a sense, and kind of an odd video, because last week, well, going on two weeks, I did two, two turnings, uh, which I was pleased with. And the uh, second turning, now I've already posted one, and I've been trying to work on this one for a little while, and I couldn't justify myself to actually finish it because I did not have this part of it recorded. And uh, this part of it, the recording of it, is to, I mean, I'm going to show the, rec the turning, but if you're up to listening to what I have to say, at least during this part right now, you will understand why I was hesitant to put this up. Now, I turned this beautiful face. And, uh, yeah, I, I can say it turned out beautiful. I like the face. But extremely extremely disappointed with the outcome so how is it that I like the vase and I don't like the outcome it's because when we get to the lathe and we put a hunk of wood up and we have a vision in our mind like I did on this case I put this beautiful stump it's up here I'll show it over here beautiful stump trimmed it up on the uh, uh, bandsaw of course and I locked my mind up as to what I wanted to make with it rather than say let me see where it develops but it came into the shop with the notion that it was going to be a vase and I looked at it fast enough and realized oh yeah I can make a vase but I missed all the opportunities the piece was offering me during the turning. During the editing, I saw it. I think I might have seen it while I was turning it, but I ignored all the beauty that was offering me during the phases that I was going through before I finalized this shape that would have made it a much, much nicer piece than this. So I felt compelled that the only way that I can show this is if I explain, at least now, as to why I didn't want to post it. And perhaps this shows that. And maybe you can see along that indeed I did miss the boat, so to speak. So the point is never never lock yourself up on a shape on an odd piece of wood that you put up don't set yourself up oh I'm going to create this and here's my visual vision here's what I see and here's what I'm going to create bad bad thing to do put it up on the lathe start going at it and see what it's developing and see what the piece wants to be not what you want the piece to be and this was a case of me wanting the piece to be like this instead of me letting the piece speak to me and it it gave me enough warnings so either way I'm posting because I still think it's a worthy piece but it's far from being what it could have been and after the fact, that's all we can do is say, well, could I have done this? Could I have done that? Yeah, after the fact, we can't go back and change it. But we can stop while we're in the process and seeing what's up. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> uh, aside from this turning, uh, today I'm not going to be doing any turning. I'm going to take it easy, relax. Um, 
some of you on Facebook, my friends on Facebook, um, know um, what has uh, might have had transpired this week. Um, and it's uh, something that can change your mindset for life on uh, how you look at things. Um, I always knocked on wood and considered myself to be a healthy person. And yeah, no, you know, normal things, uh, you know, that get in the way with age and stuff like that. But if somebody asked me, no, how's your health? Always been solid, healthy person. Well, Monday, I uh, had a heart attack. Um, and um, luckily, I recognized when it was coming on and uh, approached some of my people that were working in my job site and went up to them and uh, said, look, I think I'm having a heart attack or a stroke. If I go down, call 911. Well, they didn't even wait for me to go down because uh, I stood conscious. But, um, yep, I had a heart attack, was rushed. They, they, great people saved my life probably. Uh, but um, within um, five minutes, I was in an ambulance, and within another five, ten minutes, I was having a procedure done. Uh, they put a couple of stems on my heart. So, uh, uh, things are probably going to be a little different, uh, uh, you know, with my lifestyle. Uh, probably my work uh, methods, uh, being far away from home. Uh, long drives to get to the job site uh, might be a little bit scary for me to do, so I might not. I have to consider what my options are uh, for the future. So anyway, I'm doing well. Um, I feel that the hospital did an awesome job on me. Um, they fear that you know I do have a couple, an artery that's completely closed up because they said, well, you've been having heart problems for quite some time, my friend. It just was never severe enough. But, you know, I got one of my vessels that's completely collapsed that they could not open up. So, uh, uh, you know, I guess I got two now working out of three uh, on the main artery. So that's, uh, uh, that's what's going on, uh, which is not good. That's it, you know, uh, I guess a 60% efficiency. Um, so anyway, I will see what comes up. It's not going to stop me from being the rebel. And it's not going to stop me from doing what I love doing, which is woods turning. Thank God. Um, I might go a little easier. I might take my time a little bit more. Um, uh, but, um, uh, I'm back and I will be back. And, uh, hopefully you stick with me and hopefully I stick with you guys, uh, for a little while longer, at least enough to we, when we know our goals are. And, uh, you know, I'm going to bring up, it's, um, it's funny that uh, sometimes something has to happen that's not necessarily that good for something great to happen. And I can say that something great is happening next week for me. Um, getting my three daughters who are staggered throughout the country one up in Massachusetts with my two uh, beautiful grandchildren, uh, Elias and uh, Siani. One in Idaho that got married a little over a year ago, who has a grandson that I have not met yet. Calvin is coming from Idaho to visit me this coming week. And of course, my middle one lives nearby, so he's here all the time. So we'll, we'll have my... Uh, my five grandkids uh, all together and my three daughters and uh, with that life is complete and uh, I feel that's that's what I live for um, I've seen everybody together and rambling as usual I guess this does not stop me from being the rambling turner sometimes <laughs> so anyway Thanks. I hope you stick around and watch this video. It's very lengthy. This was probably the longest turning I have done. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your, all your patience. 
of putting up with my rambling at times. Take care, and we'll see you very soon. Well, hello, my friends. I'm back. Not that I've ever left, but this is going to be the second turning for the weekend. My wife asked me if I could turn another, if I had a piece of wood that would make a, a fairly good size vase. She wanted something a little tall. And joking around, I said, well, go out there and find me the piece of wood that looks like a vase. And maybe I will turn it. She went out there and found something, believe it or not, with a lot of character. I don't know if there's a vase in it, but I know there's a lot of character. And it's actually a piece of wood from some trees I cut a while back. All excited because I was sick. When I first started turning, it was the most one of the nicest pieces I've ever done was out of this world, but not from the same tree, just the same species. It is sea grape. I've cut down a couple of huge sea grapes, sea grape trees out of my yard in hopes that I would get some of the same exciting character that I saw on the first piece that was a road find. And I cut it down and I was disappointed. I got a pile, huge pile of logs cut up, different size, different characters, and uh, in hopes that I would get the same thing. And I have not found a single piece that interested me out of that whole thing. So I'm thinking that it's a lot of firewood that's going to be going into the pit eventually. But she managed to go over there not that I've looked at it recently, and brought me a couple of pieces. One was very typical, which is what turned me away from the wood because I didn't see anything interesting on it. And I'm not going to turn it on. But she brought me this piece. I was like, oh my god, what am I doing with this? But after a second, a couple of seconds of thinking about it, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. There's actually a lot of interest in this, not with all these branches out, but if I trim these branches down and make it manageable, and I make a vase out of this, uh, a fat body in the middle, all these crotches, all these knots coming out of it, oh my god, you better stick around and watch what's coming out out of this piece. Guaranteed, this is going to be different. I know I say that quite a bit. This one is going to be different. Stick around. I'm going to bring it to the bandsaw and chop some of these wild branches out of the way and make this more manageable. I'm going to cut them up and see what comes up on it. Now, I know some of you say, oh, well, why didn't you just cut all that down? I would have trimmed this down with the, you know, the, the chainsaw or the bandsaw, gotten rid of this. You know, don't take so much that the wood doesn't talk to you anymore and you're just creating a piece. Leave enough flexibility on the piece for it to develop as you turn it. So I don't shape with my saw, I shape on a lathe. I want to see how far off anything is away from me. If I look at this, it's like, oh my god, I, I definitely want to maintain this, but I am so far away in this area that if I do it this way, I'm not going to have anything left out of this. So. I will balance this off, not to weight, but I will balance it off to interest 
So the, the, the furthest point away from me at this point is this area right here. So I will push this log as close as I can to my tool rest over here, therefore pushing out this area further away. And right there, I seem to be catching just about everywhere on this. And the way I'm thinking is that this is going to be the bottom. It's going to be shaped somewhat of a ball shape over here. And then work it up into a neck area over here. The neck is going to be fairly thin because me pushing it to what I just did is really pushing this area out of the way. I don't know if I got room to center it a little bit better without losing that. See, just by doing that, I'm back far away again on this. So I really have to focus on not being too far from this point. First thing I'm going to do is roughly with my bowl gouge and running fairly slow because this is really an off balance piece, really off. I'll be lucky if I can hit 400 RPM with this. Probably start it off around 250, 300, and it's gonna be a lot of hit and miss for a while until I get somewhat stable and that tenant created and some of these bigger chunks out of the way where the piece is more manageable. No, I'm not going to run a circular saw, I'm not going to run uh, this back on the band saw, I'm not going to do anything that's going to force me to go where I don't want to go with this piece. So, let's get started. Lay this fairly slow. That's 280 RPM. So I'm going to time lapse this because that's what I'm going to be doing is 5 eighths full gouge and go through here until I get to the center of this. That's sharpened into a point somewhat like a, a bowl gouge. And this is quite okay, and we'll take the beating as well. As I'm going in closer, move your to, uh, tool rest closer. I'm just focusing on this bottom area. I'm not even going back here yet. I want to work it from here on up slowly but for now work it back here so I can get to the a shape that's starting to give me a dimension of the size of the piece it's going to take me about uh, 30 40 minutes just so I can get something of a shape going through here. So, I will either fast forward through all of this or show clips at different points because this is a lengthy process. You are going to be bored if I show you all of this, but basically I'm just going in here. I'm not worried about what kind of a cut I'm getting or anything like that. Just sharpen your tool every once in a while.
most likely gonna leave some of this character from the bark uh, inclusions going through it. <clears throat> Not the bark itself, but the the pattern of the bark. Uh, I think that will add a lot of interest as well to the piece uh, along with all these knots going through. Gotta go within reason, still quite a bit deeper on this and see where it goes. This is going to be shaped up to this point right here and I'm going to make a concave at this area right here making it a, a vase that goes out slightly and then it is a shallow into the neck a gradual don't know what, what to call it but it will be fairly straight uh, going from this point on in. So just getting rid of this big hump that's up here. Big wrench.
I have to go in here and make the tenon for the bottom. And uh, I think I'm going to leave this just the way it is. I like the shape. Really didn't want to go too deep on here. But I didn't want to modify this uh, neck area. Or else the neck would be too big for the size of the body. So therefore I'm better off with showing this through. And hopefully a little bit here to balance it off, but without making it up. So let's see what happens. Well, it's time to take a break, go out with the family, and the hollowing with this, for this, will be continued for tomorrow. This will be a two-part video. First part is the shaping, which has been done up to now, a lot of beating up. A lot of determining on what was happening with the piece offsetting it and tomorrow will be the battle of hollowing and that in itself will be quite a challenge it's a deep piece the uh, the base from the top of where it's finished off will be about uh, 12 inches deep and uh, it's a five and a half inch diameter at the widest point. So I'll be back tomorrow.